Welcome to Artistic Adventures. This is the final video in our Marie Antoinette doll project and we're going to be working on the wig and some final touches. But before that I want to get your help. Uh, this is a list of suggestions I have from different folks on projects to work on and I want to get you guys to vote on what I'll work on next and you can do that just by uh, stating which one in the comment section below. And the first one is uh, Steampunk Harley Quinn. This was suggested because we did the Steampunk uh, Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn is Poison Ivy's best friend in the comic book world. So they would go together well. Steampunk outfit for a Blythe doll and also a mermaid doll, which would be something kind of different. I've also had a suggestion to do Princess Mulan from the Disney uh, cartoon. And then um, a Minnie Mouse themed doll, which would be interesting. Never done anything like that. Also, maybe a Queen Elizabeth the First doll, which would kind of go along with our Queen royalty dolls that we've just done, Marie Antoinette. And the other thing is, um, I have a fashion royalty doll that I have never made a dress for. I bought her without any clothes, and poor thing has been naked for about a year. So I do need to do that. So uh, voice your opinion in uh, the comments section below and let me know which one of these sort of intrigue you. And sometimes it's based on votes and sometimes it's based on what intrigues me and uh, what or what bores me at the, at the particular time <laughs> or if I have supplies for, for this. But anyway, uh, give me your suggestions and now let's get into finishing up this beautiful Marie Antoinette doll, which by the way, I am just in love with. All right, so here she is, pretty much everything finished except for the wig and maybe a few final touches. So this is uh, looking at the texture and color of her hair. Here's a picture from one of the uh, Vigi Lebrun paintings that was done. And this is a more casual look for her. There were pictures of her with a, a boat in her hair from a, uh, celebrating the naval victory of the French in 1778. We're not going to do anything that elaborate. Um, but here was a nice picture of her with sort of an elaborate hairdo done for a picture with her son, the Dauphin of France. And um, then here's another picture. And you can see it's sort of this woolly texture to her hair and sort of piled up and then maybe some curls in the back. So, um, but since she's the queen and she's had such a tragic end, we do want to give her a nice hair. Now, I usually use alpaca fiber, which is this. Uh, it's really silky and it really resembles human hair. But for her wig, I'm going to use uh, sheep wool to make her wig. And uh, this is a rather long fiber that I purchased and thought it might be appropriate for wigs. And I've glued it all to this wig cap off camera. I didn't want to go into that. I've many videos on making wigs that you can find. Uh, but basically just glued the ends of the fiber to the wig cap that I had molded to her head. And uh, it's finished now, and so we're just going to place it on her head, and then we can start styling it. But I thought the texture of this wool was more appropriate for the look of her hair. And I just, after I got it all on there, I combed it all out, and I think it's going to work well because it's almost like Velcro. When you put it somewhere, it kind of stays, which, you know, is different from the alpaca fiber, which is so silky. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull out some tendrils of hair that will hang down and curl. And then the rest of this, we're gonna pull up on top of her head and style. So I pulled out a couple um, on the sides at the front and then I pulled out a little bit at the back. And these we're gonna curl. The rest of this, we're gonna pull up and attach to give it that bouffant look. And then um, we'll start curling it. So I'm actually using, a, you know, like a pet comb with the, the thin wire to comb this out. Combs just weren't working. I'm going to use this white pipe cleaner to uh, hold this up. It almost stands up on its own. <laughs> this fiber is really something. And uh, just pulling it as tight as I can and then twisting it in the back. And this will give us the basis for the bouffant part of her hair. So I'm going to Pull some of that out a little bit to make it a little bit looser. We want to give her a nice wig for her, for this outfit. The dress is so big, I almost felt like you have to have some big hair to balance out the doll. 
All right, so that, that kind of looks nice. And I'm going to take my little tiny curling iron that I have. This is like a, a one inch curling iron, I guess. And uh, I know one inch, it's a, a half inch of an inch. Yeah, small, very small. And so we're going to curl this up and see how that works. I haven't curled this before, this type of fiber. I actually bought this fiber some time ago, maybe a year ago, and I, I even don't even know what sort of sheep this came from. Um, not a normal, like you just see the typical sheep. This is something more exotic than that because it has a really long fiber. Um, it's really pretty, but it is more coarse and kinky than the uh, alpaca fiber, but it does curl pretty well. And it looks like it's gonna stay in the curl a little bit better than the alpaca fiber which I, I tend to have to put hairspray on. All right, so um, I'm gonna do the same thing I did in those front curls on the back curls, but I'm gonna go off camera because this does kind of take some time. And then I'll do put some curls in that mop that's up on top of her head also, and we'll see if we can build that up a little bit. All right, so I did the, the curls in the back, as you can see, so they're kind of hanging down. And I did a couple curls on the side because you tend to see her with the piled up hair, but then maybe some curls coming down the side. So I want to make this a little taller. So I'm going to take a section of the front of that hair there and take a little small pipe cleaner that I cut a portion off of. And I'm just going to roll this up. This will help it stay in shape and give it a little more volume than it would if I I curled it, I'm afraid it would eventually fall out. So now that I've got that poof up there, I wanna uh, attach it down to the uh, the bottom part and I'm gonna use one of my small bob pins. You can buy these online, I think they're one inch. And that holds that down on top of the, uh, the first portion of the hair. I'm gonna leave those curls there on the side, which kind of add to the look of the, the period. And then just to top this off, <laughs> so to speak, I'm gonna do another small, a little bit smaller section, but uh, the same process. I'm going to, first of all, I'm gonna trim it just a little bit so it's not quite as thick. So I want this section to be a little bit smaller. So it's sort of like a pyramid, you know, side going up wider at the base and a little bit smaller at the top. And the same process, just curling it around this a uh, smaller piece of pipe cleaner and just rolling it down and then bending the edges of the pipe cleaner down to secure it and uh, once I get it positioned we'll put another one of those little short bob pins in it and that will hold it in place and give it the, the look that we want sort of bringing it forward just a little bit because we're going to have a lot of curls in the back as we make use of the rest of that fiber that's still poofing out behind her. <laughs> I have to say, I'm just, I'm so in love with this doll. I didn't know how she would turn out, but I really think it's, it's probably one of the better dolls that I've ever done. And I, I think it's partially because of her expression. And I just, I don't know, I've connected with Marie over the weeks that I've been doing this project and all the research that I've done. Um, so she's kind of special to me. But anyway, so I've curled the back of the hair now, and we kind of have finished this part of the the uh, basic process of the wig. So you can see, I just curled that and left it. I didn't, you know, use the, the pipe cleaners or whatever. And I did put some hairspray on those just to make sure they hold. So now I want to pull the curls that are on the left side of her face back just a little bit. And I'm going to use this spiral decorative hair piece, hair ornament to do that. And what you do is just set it down into where you want it to be and twist it. And it twists into the hair beneath it. So she'll have one of those on the sort of back left side of her hair. And then we're going to put one, a similar one up um, in the top of her hair. Because she usually had some sort of ornament and feathers in her hair. And purple was her favorite color. And it's a royal color. So we're going to give her some purple feathers. Whoop. Yeah, we're going to do some purple feathers, and it kind of goes with the shade of the periwinkle in the, in the uh, fabric of her dress, too. So I think that'll look nice. And that's sort of typical of how she might have had a, a, an adornment. Um, 
there's not uh, not really any that I see a lot of pictures with her with that sort of crown. It's really more the hair ornaments or some sort of uh, poofy hat or scarf or something like that. So anyway, we're going to, uh, actually, I, I ended up gluing these feathers down into the hair. I'm just putting them in here so you can see how, how they would look before I do that. But I want them to stay attached. So I did use my E6000 on the bottom and just um, push it down into the hair. So that gives her sort of typical uh, look for that time period. And, you know, we do associate Marie with with her big hair. All right, so for some finishing touches, remember we do have the undergarments, so I've put those on her. She's got her pantaloons and her lace over the knee hose. And I'm going to finish up the shoes. Um, if you remember, I left the ribbons long because I, I knew that uh, I'd be changing them over from the, the model doll. So once I've got the shoes on this doll where they're going to stay, I was able to trim the ends of the ribbons so they weren't so long. And now since I want these, these to stay, you know, in the ribbon and not come loose, I'm going to put some E6000 glue on the knot and that will hold it tight. And then the other thing is uh, just to decorate it in the manner of Marie. <laughs> We're going to put a little uh, clear Swarovski crystal right over that bow where the glue is. And that's sort of the finishing touch for the shoes. And go ahead and do the other side as well. Same thing. I'm putting some glue around on that knot to hold it. Make sure that it doesn't come loose since it's just tied in a bow. I'm making sure that I get, you know, kind of underneath where it's tied as well. And then we're going to pop another crystal on that bow. I think that looks pretty regal and royal. Very nice. So now she's completely finished. And I uh, want to tell you a little bit more about her as we end this project. As I said, I've really become fascinated. I wanted to show you this picture of the diamond necklace that was the one I told you, the affair of the necklace that got her in trouble uh, that people said she didn't pay the court jeweler, but she actually did. But unfortunately, it had already sort of ruined her reputation with the French people. Uh, it's really an elaborate thing, and uh, you'll see this. I think it's actually on the Marie Antoinette Barbie doll. Also, this was really sad. Uh, in her statement that she made at her trial, she said, I was a queen. You took away my crown. A wife, you killed my husband. A mother, you deprived me of my children. My blood alone remains. Take it, but do not make me suffer but do not make me suffer. And that's, um, you know, sad to think that's how she ended up at the end after all this grandness, all these beautiful things. Um, she was put in an unmarked grave with her husband and they put lime on their bodies to deteriorate the body so they couldn't be found and I guess made some sort of martyrdom out of, but they were uh, found the remains, whatever few pieces there were and put in this, cathedral called St. Denis where most of the French royalty were buried and this is their actual tombs that you can see today. So here's the finished product. Here's our, our poor queen looking as regal as possible. We're going to remember her this way <laughs> and uh, I'm just going to take you few through a few views of her at different angles so you can see the completed outfit, the completed jewels, the dress, the wig, everything. I was really happy with how she turned out and really just, I don't know, feel very attached to this doll for some reason. I guess that's crazy, but some dolls I get really attached to and and others, they're okay, but, you know, I don't mind selling them or whatever. I probably will sell them. I'll put her up for sale probably, but she did have a lot go into her and uh, she has a lot of uh, workmanship into her, so she may be a little bit more expensive than some of my other dolls on my Etsy site. But anyway, I hope you all enjoyed watching this series and learning a little bit more about our poor Queen Marie. I'll always remember this sad face, but also remember her in her full glory as one of the most famous queens of our history and of France. So that's the end of that series. 
We'll be looking forward to your votes to see what we work on next. And be sure and subscribe if you haven't done so, so you don't miss a thing, right? Okay, thanks and bye.